right in the shop today on the WD Alice Chalmers the plan today is to get this generator off and to put this alternator in place gonna have to modify my bracket a little bit looks like modify the bracket a little bit and move the bracket forward some and get that done up the bracket for the adjustment might be right might have to bend it just a little bit but plan is to take that generator off get our single wire gm alternator put on um get this redneckery mess out of here i've got a battery box for it um the battery that goes in it is bad so i need to get a new battery and this is what i had sitting around that would start it um and then the previous guy that was working on this tractor he made the new battery box and made the new cover and he mounted the controls to the top of the lid well, that's not really where they're supposed to go because that puts them kind of in here somewhere and these controls are hard enough to reach as it is when you're sitting clear back there on the seat so those controls are really supposed to be on the front of the battery box that way they're a good three or four inches closer to you so we're going to work on getting that off getting it put back where it needs to be um and i need to get me a voltmeter because i don't have one um, and I'll have to get this is a switch for the headlights which do work um, here somewhere there they are yeah the headlights do work so I'll have to rotate now that switch is right now I'll have to rotate that switch so it'll be in the right position when you mount this back like it's supposed to be like i said it's supposed to be mounted that way um this switch is actually a kill switch this tractor does not have your typical coil and standard distributor it has a magneto so the magneto does not need any electricity to fire up and run the tractor it creates its own current so there's a kill switch you ground it out and that kills the spark so there's a wire going from the kill switch here to that dash piece um, and when you flip that switch it grounds out the magneto which kills the spark and lets the tractor die <coughs> so I'm gonna work on getting the old generator off first and we'll have to get I don't need both of these wires ran. I just need the one. So I may or may not eliminate that other wire. He's got it ran and tucked in pretty good. It comes around here and goes through a grommet and up through where it's supposed to go. I don't know. We'll see. I may leave it. I may cut it out of there. Anywho, that's beside the point. Main thing is getting this old generator off and getting the bracketry redone so we can mount the alternator on. The wiring part and all that back here can be done later. The main thing is get this swapped out. This is going to be the harder part. I have to do some cutting and welding on that bracket uh, to make things work. And that belt's about shot anyway. So I'm going to have to get a new belt. Uh, this belt's a little too thick for the alternator. Um, and believe it or not, I don't know if it'll work on this one, but these pulleys actually are adjustable. There's a bolt here and a collar, and you can actually make that belt wider, or the pulley, wider and narrower. I don't know if I'll be able to get that to move or not, um, but we'll try it. Anyhow... We'll work on getting this taken off here real quick. 
All right. Got the old generator out. I got to look in. I forgot that this belt, you cannot change this belt without taking loose this radiator hose because it is trapped. The pulley, there's, there's room between the crank start shaft to get the belt off. But that stupid radiator hose goes right through where the belt needs to go. There's no way to get that off without taking that belt, I mean without taking that hose off. So, even though this belt is cracked really bad, really bad, and it's a little too wide for our alternator, that's fine, it's gonna stay. And when it breaks is when I'll worry about changing it. So, I got the bracket for the generator is out. <clears throat> there have been plenty of other holes drilled in there already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this same bracket. Um, and I will mock up the alternator with this bracket. And I will just slide it forward as needed to make the belt line up. And then we'll just drill some new holes. That's all we're going to do. And then I've got an idea. I'm going to have to put a little bend in this bracket here. I'm not a big fan of how it's mounted. The water pump is held on with two bolts. One of which is being used as this bracket bolt. And ideally what should have happened is there should have been a nut run down to hold this water pump tight. And then the bracket put on top of that with another nut is how that should have happened. Because when I loosened up this nut to get this bracket loose, the water pump started, gasket started seeping. So, I had to tighten that back up. I don't really care for the way that's designed. But I'm probably not going to do anything about it today. That will probably be another for thing for future Chris when this belt breaks. And we have to take that lower radiator hose off and drain the coolant. We'll probably worry about redoing this whole setup then. And uh, hopefully that'll be a long time down the road. So, I'm going to work on getting my alternator <clears throat> mocked up into this bracket. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. And then uh, we'll see where it needs to be and get some new holes drilled. Right, got the alternator kind of mocked up here. Ideally... I need to cut this tab and move it here. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to get a bolt long enough to run from here to there and put a bushing in. Because I kind of like leaving things to where if I ever want to put the generator back or somebody wants to put the generator back, they don't have to remake all that. <clears throat> um, and I think I can get... We'll have to see. It may get a little wobbly in there once it's running, but the way it is now won't work at all because that's too much flex. Um, so I've got to either cut that tab and move it, which is, like I said, would be ideal, um, or get a long bolt with a bushing in between. And I think I'm going to do that idea first uh, just because it's simpler for right now, and <clears throat> if it'll work, it'll work. And then up here, I'm going to have to make me a tab or something to come down to this bracket uh, from this bracket down to the alternator because the way it is right now it doesn't really line up great and with the belt that's on here and the pulley that's on the alternator I can't get it out far enough to line up very good anyway but the plan right now is I'm going to drill my holes that I've got marked here, get this bracket bolted back down, and then uh, we'll see what I need to do here for sure. I am going to see about if I can get a whole new pulley for right here. That may be my best option. 
Um, and then when I put my alternator on my bracket here, the fan was hitting this tab, so I had to grind that tab down a little bit. And granted, this is not the original factory bracket for the generator anyway. That was manufactured later. Because uh, originally, this was my grandpa's tractor, and my grandpa had this set up for an alternator to begin with. And then, <clears throat> after he passed away, my stepdad kind of took over doing things on this tractor, and he's the one that went back with a generator system. He was going to put it back factory original is what his plan was. Um, I don't want to mess with the generator system. I like the simplicity of a single wire alternator. Uh, they're inexpensive. I think this one cost me 70, 80 bucks. Um, it's just much simpler setup to do. And with a little bit of fabrication, it'll work just fine. <clears throat> so, let me get some holes drilled in the frame rail. So I can get that mounted better. So I can see more what I need to do here. And I may take this nut off and see if I can get that pulley off pretty easy. Alright, let's get back. Just a real quick interesting note here. These frames on these tractors are made out of like C-channel. And it is thicker in the middle than it is out. So, there's little swedges on the bottom side that was holding where the bolts go through. I don't know if those are a factory or not. I would assume they probably are. But anyway, you put that on the bottom side of the frame, and that lets your bolt be straight up and down. Pretty ingenious idea. I never even realized it till I took all that off. I just thought they were big spacers, and they're actually little wedges. Pretty nifty. Um, so yeah, whether that's factory or almost had to be in factory, I would think. But cool. I'll use them back. Right. Got the bracket mounted back down. Got the alternator kind of sitting here. I got the pulley off the alternator. So I'm going to go to my local farm and home supply house and see if I can't get a wider V pulley to go on the front of there. It probably won't be <clears throat> as heavy as this pulley. This is a nice, stout, heavy pulley. But, this thing won't be turning crazy RPMs, so I don't need nothing that heavy duty anyway. Um, surely maybe I can find a pulley that'll be suitable for that belt. I need to get a, either find a bolt, which may be a tall order that's about 8 inches long, or just get me a piece of all thread and make my own bolt. And then once I get that done and get this kind of secured better, then I can see better what I'm going to do with this bracket. Which honestly, it's pretty damn close. Once I get this all lined up, I might be able to just kind of bend that out some and make it work. But that all depend on a pulley and a bolt or a piece of all thread. Uh, so for now, I think... I'm going to put the brakes on here. I need to run to town here a little bit anyway. I'll see if I can't get some supplies and make this thing work a little better. Catch up with y'all in a while. Right, back from town. I found a pulley that has got the right width for the belt that we need. The only problem is she's a little too thick this way. Um, to fit on our shaft and the hole in the center is just a shade too small um, this, so we're going to attempt to take the death wheel and I'm going to attempt to cut this off the best I can and then we're going to try to ream out that hole in the center a little bit and if all that goes to shit, I still got the old pulley I can put back on there. Uh, this pulley cost me like 25 bucks or something like that. So not a great loss if I screw it up. Uh, so I'm going to get to cutting here and see if I can make this work. Alright, so here's what we got going on. 
This is the pulley I bought at the farm and home store. And I was able to take the death grinder wheel and chop off the excess that was sticking out on the bottom. And then I took the sanding disc and put on the angle grinder and kind of leveled everything up nice and neat. Then the center hole wasn't quite big enough. So I took a stepper bit on my drill press and took a stepper bit on my drill press here and drilled down through there to make that just a little bit bigger and got that all put on so this pulley is the correct size for the belt that we're running it's got just a little wobble to it not bad but I think it was made with a wobble in it so I ain't 100% sure because I didn't check it so then got the alternator if I can get a hold of it one handed and we've got this bracket has been modded just a little bit bent just enough to kind of get it back where it needs to be and I've got a super long bolt and yes this is a galvanized pipe nipple using as a bushing it'll work just fine and then I have the alternator all stuck in place so let me get that kind of stuck in there and we'll show you what it looks like right got the alternator all mounted up looks like it's all the belts lined up pretty good and the bracket all works good eh, it's a little hinky looking but it'll work for what it is it's nice and tight let's see make sure it don't throw the belt when I fire it up magneto down so there it's all mounted up I think it works just fine I do a little little redneckery on it but it'll be okay like I said it doesn't turn a ton of RPM so no more than what it gets used it ought to work just fine the next thing I'll work on doing is getting the electrical all done getting rid of that redneckery mess I gotta get a voltmeter, a couple of toggle switches, and we'll see if we can get that all done up. Alright, till next time.